detail is everything. That was pounded into my head ever since I worked with my dad since 86. I mean, I would hear that once a week, pay attention to detail. My dad was interested in cars in, uh, in his early teens, uh, messed around with models. That was in the 50s. So he started a career in 64, opened up a paint shop and was custom painting. And from there he did local cars, a lot of funny cars, that kind of thing. He decided to move to Arizona. He had always come out here to visit. So he moved his operation from Ohio and uh, opened up a shop here. I moved out here in 86. I graduated high school. It was my plan all my life to move out here. I mean, I just showed up at his shop. I want a job. He asked me, are you sure this is what you want to do? I'm like, hell yeah. I mean, that's all I thought about. That's all I ever thought about growing up is cars. I mean, I think more of cars than I do women, which is hard to believe, but it is. I mean, through high school, through my early years, that's all I ever thought about. And he told me straight up, you don't make it rich at this, you make a living. That's it. And that's what I'm doing, I'm making a living. But I enjoy going to work every day. Well, ever since I was a kid, I'd always goof around in the garage with my dad. My dad's been a hot rodder for years, you know, since before I was even around. So I was always helping him in the garage, and my dad has known Squeege since probably the late 70s, early 80s. So we'd get in the hot rod on a Saturday and go cruise around to the shops, and we'd always stop at Squeege's. My dad, Squeege, uh, he would got that name when he was born, uh, brought home from the hospital. His grandfather uh, nicknamed him Squeegee because when he cried, it sounded like a squeegee being drug across glass. So everybody knows him as Squeege. This shop has some deep traditional roots. It goes way back to the 60s. Uh, the, the quality is phenomenal. Most of the cars are show-winning cars. Fit and finish is extremely important, and it's one of the most low-key, um, I think, undiscovered shops. I've known about squeegees since I moved out here in 84. I probably started hearing about them in like 87. But I've seen, I've seen paint jobs of theirs, flame jobs of Doug's, and it's like, wow, them guys really know what they're doing. My dad built a 41, and it was his last car he built before he retired in 04, and I picked up the ball from there. He does a uh, occasional surprise visit. He walks around, bitches a little bit, and then takes me to lunch, so. But him and I get along real good now, better than we ever have. I'm pretty sure he's proud of me, and uh, we're busy as hell, and all these guys here have the same attitude. They're fortunate they get to work on hot rods for a living. And, uh, and everybody here has the same type of passion for it, so that really helps. I mean, you can't really look at this as just another job. Everybody around here does pretty much everything. There's not one person here that has a single job. Everybody is kind of cross-trained, so we all can help each other out all over the place. Primarily what we do here are uh, restorations, hot rods, and customs. A lot of these cars are basically drivable art. It's over the top, it, and it's, it's a lot of fun to be able to do that, to be expected to push things to that level. Every piece of the car has to be perfection. We don't build production, we build perfection, and to get that takes hundreds of hours. So you're paying attention to every little square inch of these cars. Thousands of fasteners, thousands of things on these cars that have to be perfect before they go on. Sometimes it takes nine months to body work a car to a year to do full, you know, underneath, outside, everything. You don't body work a door and go, oh, it's good. You do it two or three times and get it perfect. And just like everything else, the metal work, the chrome, we don't use second rate. You use the best people in the business to get a perfect car. Every car you work on, there's not going to be another one just like it anywhere. You could go down to the Ferrari showroom and buy $300,000 Ferraris all day long. You know, or you could come here and have just the coolest, most incredible one-off car ever built just for you. Like our 47 Cadillac we're building, that's not a car you see every day. It's usually not a car people cut up. It's worth a lot of money just sitting there stock. It's getting a semi-smooth job. We're gonna remove some of the door handles, but keep most of the stock stainless. It's gonna sit really low and have a LS3 engine, you know, all modern stuff inside. So it's like a new car, but it'll you know, have that old look. 
The car behind me is uh, based off a 32 Ford Roadster. It has 34 Ford Roadster styling uh, and a monster Boss 429 Holman Moody engine. Uh, all one-off steel body and uh, just about every part on it's handmade and, and one-off designed. The five window 32, it's not an uncommon car, but it's a blown Arden engine. That might be the only car I ever work on with a blown Arden engine. And there's not a lot of people that can say they worked on a car that had those parts, you know, it's, it's definitely different. Typical customers, what I get from them is what they like and what they don't like. You know, let's say they like early traditional hot rods, okay, we're gonna keep the car all along those lines, and then they kind of put the car in our hands and trust us what our decisions are, design work, and that. And, and it usually works out great. However, I do have other customers who are real specific on how they want their car finished, and, and I'll do them that way. When the customer comes in, and you can see that, that glow in their eye, you can see how excited they are, and you can almost tell that they go home at night and think about, wow, I can't wait till my car is done so I can cruise it to the next hot rod run, or even a, a Main Street cruise. Just the, the fire in their eye, to know that you're doing something for them that they are just gonna treasure for a long time. The majority of my guys here are big hot rod lovers. You know, that just creates a good team because everybody has the same frame of mind and the same passion for this. I wanted to come work someplace where they expect high quality. You know, the collision shops that I've been in, they expected quality, but not like we do here, and that's what I enjoy doing. We stand behind our work, which is very important. There's a lot of shops out there that won't. Quality here is better than you're gonna see anywhere else. Nothing, I mean, it's perfection and that, that's, that's it. You know, every car that you have, it's almost like your kid. You know, you work with it for so long and you want it to be perfect as if it's your own car. Everything's detailed. Sometimes you're thinking, wow, this is gonna get covered by upholstery or something like that. And it's like, why am I going this far? But at the same time, you're thinking, well, if a guy 10 years down the road decides to restore this car and he pulls it apart and he sees all the detail that we have done, he's gonna be like, wow, these guys really know what they're doing. Well, the story behind Amber um, was a 34 Roadster that my dad originally built for uh, a friend of his. The way it sat, the way it was channeled, the way the fender lines were, I mean, it was all out of my dad's head. It was a beautiful car at this time. It was maroon, uh, kind of dated, had kind of an 80s, uh, some 80s looking things going on with it, but nonetheless, it was a beautiful car. I can remember his dad coming in and Doug telling his dad about his ideas he's got, and you know, of course, Scrooge was you know, gritting his teeth because that was his bill. You know, he, Doug's going to change this, and he's going to change that. Uh, some of the styling my dad had done, I cut off the car, which immediately pissed my dad off. But to my surprise, we won Amber, and and we were all pretty floored. Given the opportunity to paint that Roadster, yeah, there's there's a bit of tension there. There's a little bit of anxiety. You know, there's a little bit of anxiety in every car, but being as that was one of Doug's dad's friends and Doug's friend for so many years, you get the butterflies in the stomach every time you go in there and start shooting parts for it, because you know it needs to be just a notch above perfect, too. You wake up in the morning looking forward to going to work. You spend a majority of your life at work, and, you know, why not make it something you'd love to do and look forward to going and doing? It's like a dream job. Usually when I tell people in a group of strangers, when you get in that situation, what do you do? And it's always, oh, that's a dream job. And it really is. I mean, who gets to wake up every day and go, I'm going to go build hot rods. It's so good to wake up in the morning and be excited about going to work. It really is. This isn't just a job for me, because when I go home, I'm out in my garage till 10 o'clock at night. Like, I bought a house just so I could live in my garage. I couldn't see myself doing anything else than this ever. I mean. This is what I want to do, and this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Working on these cars, I mean, it, it's it's a privilege to be able to do this for a living. Hot Rods is, you know, my life. Ever since I was a kid, I've drawn cars. So it's always been, since as long as I can remember, what I was into. I even told my wife, you know, if we had to sell the house and get a smaller house or whatever it took, this is the only thing I want to do for the rest of my life. Where I'm at now is I'm, I'm positive is where I'll be for the rest of my life. It's always been my lifelong dream to own and operate a hot rod shop, so I'm living that dream. I wouldn't do anything else.